The quotient rule, which just really means the fraction rule, has a lot of similarities to the product rule that we covered in the preceding video. So instead of being a product, something that we're multiplying here, we're dividing two variables by each other. And in this case, when we take the derivative of two variables being divided by each other, a fraction, in other words, we can use this formula here. So the top part, the numerator in particular, is reminiscent of the product rule. It was the same, except that it had a plus sign and was lacking the denominator. So the quotient rule has z dw dx and w dz dx as separate terms in the numerator, and we subtract w dz dx from the first term. The denominator is simply z squared. And this is useful in the same kinds of situations as the product rule. We already covered those reasons in the earlier video. So let's jump straight to some numbers to uh, make everything here clear. So let's say y is equal to 4x squared divided by x cubed plus 1. We can split this up into two separate variables. So let's call the numerator w, 4x squared, and the denominator, let's call that z, which is x cubed plus 1. Now, separately, we can easily calculate the derivatives. So 4x squared, according to the power rule, as well as the constant multiple rule, becomes 8x, because x squared becomes x to the power of 1, which is x. The 2 comes in front of the x. 2 times 4 is 8. z has two terms, but the second term is just a constant, so that becomes 0. We can ignore it. x cubed becomes 3x squared according to the power rule because we subtract 1 from the power, that becomes 2. We move the power in front, so 3x squared. Bringing everything together now, if we want to calculate the derivative of y, we can now use our formula, our quotient rule, by splitting up y into w and z, and then using the rule that we have here. So simply plugging in the values. So z is x cubed plus 1. And dw dx, we know now, is 8x. And then we subtract from that term this term here, which consists of w, 4x squared, and dz dx, which we now know is 3x squared. In our denominator, we have z squared, so that's x cubed plus 1 squared. All right, and then you can simplify the equation a bit by multiplying within the term. So x cubed plus 1 times 8x gives us 8x to the power of 4 plus 8x. And then we can also multiply here. So 4x squared times 3x squared gives us 12x to the power of 4, which we're, of course, subtracting from the earlier part. And that's uh, about as simple as it gets. There's not much value in multiplying out the denominator. We can now simply perform arithmetic, addition and subtraction on the like terms here. So we have x to the power of 4. Well, 8x to the power of 4 minus 12x to the power of 4 leaves us with negative 4x to the power of 4. And that is a final answer. I've got one more derivative rule for you before we tackle some more comprehension exercises. It's called the chain rule, and it's one of the most useful in machine learning, as we'll see.